Um, I think that was said, as far as what I understood, but um, yeah, this talk is going to be in English. <laughs> because I can't speak Dutch, unfortunately. So, um, I'm going to speak today about uh, capabilities in WordPress um, and how to use capabilities if you're writing a plugin or something like that. And um, have you ever asked yourself or have you ever had the point where, for example, um, wanted a, your client um, to be able to do to make to basically have the editor role in WordPress and be able to manage edit posts and that kind of stuff. But maybe you also want them to edit the menu and the widgets. But then you don't want to grant them all control about, about all parts of your website. Like you don't want them to manage the site options. Right now in WordPress, there is no role for that. You have administrator and editor, but nothing in between. So that's where capabilities come into play and uh, and. This talk is going to show you how to tweak that. For example, also in another example would be WooCommerce. Maybe you want somebody to only be available to change the um, products, but not the regular posts, something like that. Um, so this is fairly, some of this may be fairly uh, complex, but also because I need to go through it rather quickly. So um, if some, if at some point um, you get lost, I'm sorry, but I will be here all day and we'll be happy to go through it um, in more detail and uh, in later during the day. Um, so let's start. So first of all, definitions, what are capabilities actually? Um, capabilities in WordPress, they describe tasks that a user can or cannot perform. For example, edit posts is a capability. Can the user edit posts or can the user manage options in WordPress? Um, those are capabilities. They're technically just strings, which, yeah, what, uh, that describe what a user can or cannot do. Um, and then roles. Um, this is, should be, um, this should be fairly um, known. Uh, roles are, your, for example, administrator, editor, those are the roles. And those roles describe or define which capabilities a user has because every role includes certain capabilities and if a user has that role, that user also has all these capabilities. So these are examples again for some WordPress capabilities. Um, edit posts, for example, or upload files, which um, regulates access to the media library, the manage categories, manage options. Most of that is fairly uh, self-explanatory. Um, however, you can also have custom capabilities, and that's very important for plugins. Um, so let's imagine we'll write a plugin that, that has tutorial functionality, and we call the plugin Capability Tutorials, and um, this could be capabilities that this plugin could use, for example, to um, control access to managing the tutorials. Um, when you, if you see the CT in here, CT underscore, this is just because when you write a plugin, make sure to prefix everything so that it doesn't conflict with WordPress core or other plugins. Um, so why should you even worry about capabilities? So first of all, there's security because you need to control access. You don't grant, you won't, don't want to grant access to functionality to somebody who is not trusted enough, I guess, to do that. Um, then usability, um, you don't want if you give every user the administrator role, um, and there are many users that only need to edit posts, it's not very user-friendly for them to, to have 10 menu items when they only need two or something like that. So you can control that with capabilities as well. And then there's customizability, which is very important when you write, especially when you write a public plugin that you want to publish on WordPress.org, for example. Um, in that case, you should, it, you should handle capabilities in a way that other developers using your plugin for their custom setup or, or a client setup can tweak it. So now, um, how are the capabilities and roles stored? Now we get into technical details. Um, so the available roles for a site, so administrator, editor, and so on, they are stored by default. They are in the, stored in the options database table as an array. And the capabilities that are part of each role are also part of that array. So um, this is basically a dump of all that data. And uh, so um, let's go to the bottom. Um, 
Now you see here the um, subscriber role, for example, it only has the read capability and the contributor role has two more capabilities, but it also has the read capability. So you may know in WordPress, subscriber is basically the lowest role and so and then comes contributor and so and, and so on, administrators then the highest role. But technically, roles in WordPress are not hierarchical. Um, they're just implemented that way because you could also have a role theoretically imagine contributor didn't have the read capability and then it would mean they suddenly can do one thing that the subscriber can't do but then they but the subscriber can also do something that they can do so just something to be aware of capabilities and roles don't need to be hierarchical um, then the actual roles that a user has that those are stored in the user meta table for that specific user um, they're stored as a serialized array as well, and um, this is all, in most of the cases it just looks like that. Um, for example, if, if you're an editor, it would just have the editor role in there. Um, but it's e because of this is because this is an array, it's easily possible for WordPress to support multiple roles. It is just functionality that is not exposed via a UI. So, but there are plugins that easily allow you to add, have multiple roles per user. Um, and another thing is you could even add raw capability strings in there, like you could have someone in there that is an editor, but can also manage options when you just put manage options in there. Um, so, but this is a practice that's not recommended. Again, just something to know, to be aware of. So guidelines for plugin developers. Um, from now on, I'm not gonna talk about roles anymore. Um, what should be only important for you as a plugin developer is capabilities. Um, then never add capabilities to the database unless you introduce an entirely new role. Um, you don't. You usually don't need to introduce a role. That's mostly something that a custom setup should do. And again, use custom 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 capabilities instead of existing core capabilities. Because otherwise, if you only use core capabilities, it's not possible to control access to your own fun plugins functionality. You would always, it would always also affect the same core area using those ca same capabilities. So how do you actually do all these things? Um, there's the most basic functionality here is the current user can function, where you pass in a string, for example, edit posts or manage options, and um, then you get a boolean back that says true or false, the user can or cannot perform that action. So you usually use these in if clauses. Then there's also um, the user can the user can function. It's a little less common, um, but it's essentially exactly the same, just for a specific user that may not be the current user. You rarely use that because in most of cases you just want to know for the current user, but sometimes it may be handy to have. Um, then capabilities itself themselves, again they are either you handle it by WordPress or when they're custom, you have to handle them. And this is where it gets a little complex. Um, there are two types of capabilities in WordPress. We have primitive capabilities and meta capabilities. Um, so primitive capabilities, they are sort of the general capabilities, like, um, like the edit posts capability. Or they usually consist of a, an, um, an action, like a verb, and a plural string. Um, and they are granted via role from the database or via the user has cap filter and this filter I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and then we also have meta capabilities. Those are more specific capabilities that always receive another argument. They're specific to a certain item. For example, there's the single, and as you can see, those are, in this, these examples here, they are the same capabilities as the primitive capabilities, but with singular strings at the end. So, these capabilities are basically check can the user edit one specific post or can the user activate one specific plugin. Um, and, and meta capabilities, they are not stored anywhere really. They are all, there's, there has to be logic to map meta capabilities to primitive capabilities which are required. For example, um, when you edit a post, and you give the post ID like here. Um, it WordPress will WordPress will check is this post by 
but it's written by someone else. In that case, you need to have the edit others posts capability. Is that post private? In that case, you'd also need to have edit private posts as a cap primitive capability. And so basically, all meta capabilities will be resolved to one or more primitive capabilities. Activate plugin is a much simpler example. By default, this will always just <coughs> be resolved to activate plugins. No complexity there. Then we have two special capabilities. There is the exist capability, which is, so both of these are some kind of hack, actually. Um, if, you do, if you do current user can exist, it will always return true, so there's no point in doing that. But these things are useful for mapping, because maybe, um, maybe you want a specific capability in your, probably something for custom setups, maybe you want a custom uh, capability to be available to everyone even a non-logged in user. And then you could resolve the map, the meta capability to the exist capability. Contrary, if, you, if there are capabilities that you want nobody to do, then you can resolve to do not allow. So a bad example would be to resolve the manage options capability to exist, for example, because you don't want every user to be able to manage your options. Um, Again, naming conventions, like I already said, um, mid primitive capabilities should consist of verb and a plural string, and this uh, meta capability is similar but with a singular string. So, how does this all work? What happens when you run current user can, when you, when you check for a capability? So, WordPress will first check is this capability checked for? Is it a meta capability? And if so, it will map it to its required primitive capabilities depending also, also sometimes depending on the additional arguments you specify, like in that example where the post ID was passed. Um, and there's a filter map meta cap executed that you can hook in as a plugin developer, more on that in a bit. Um, then WordPress runs logic to maybe alter the user's primitive capabilities from the database. Because again, I said before, you should not store your own capabilities in the database. So this is where you can filter the, the capabilities a user has. And essentially, after that, the user, the user now has to have all primitive capabilities that the map meta cap process returned in order to proceed. So if you, um, if you do edit post, the thing, meta capability, and the post is um, private and by someone else, you would need to have both the edit private posts and the edit others posts capability. Now we get to actual code. Um, so this plugin I talked about, it actually exists as a small demo. Um, capability tutorials, it adds a very simple tutorial post type and a setting screen with some options to customize the behavior of the post type. So this is the setting screen you see you can treat the rewrite slug, so the slug that's in the URL for each um, tutorial, and then there are which, post type, which features the, should the post type support. It's kind of not very user-friendly, but it's just a demo. So. Um, so again, checking for capabilities, you do that with current user can. And if you now want to add a menu page, so add menu page and add sub-menu page, you may be familiar with these functions. You need those when you add, a, add any, back, any page to the WordPress admin. Those are examples that actually require you to specify a capability. Like here, um, I called it manage CT options. So that's the custom capability for this specific settings screen. And um, WordPress will internally then use current user can to check that. You can furthermore um, read also give you use custom capabilities when you register a post type. Um, this would go beyond the scope of this talk, but the plugin that you can look at, that, it was li that is linked here, um, it does that and it has, I, I added a lot of comments on how this works, so if you're interested, please have a look later. Um, and then, but we continue for now with the settings page. So generally, when you add fields to your settings page, you use these, this settings API using the add settings field function. So this is a valid example. I, I don't say this is not bad, but you can do it better. You could add capability checks for each singular option, and 
this, would es this essentially allows to tweak very granular access. You could say the user can access this option but not the other two or something like that. So here, um, and those are meta capabilities, so it's manage CT option and then the always, and then the slug of the respective option is passed as argument. So when you have these things in place and you go now go to your settings page, you just see this. Well, of course, you now, first you need to tell WordPress how to handle these capabilities because you made checks but you didn't actually implement how to handle them. And for the granular capabilities, for the, for the primitive capabilities, so that would be manage CT options when registering the options page, you can use the user has cap filter. And this passes as the first argument, that's the only one you need to actually worry about. It passes all capabilities that the user has. So if we want to, very, a very simple solution for your own plugin could be, if the user has the manage options capability, simply also set the value for your own manage CT options capability to the same value. So basically grant manage CT options if the user has manage options. And again, manage options would be a core capability that's already in part of WordPress. So after you've done that, you can now access the options page, but it's empty. Why that? Um, you still need to map the meta capabilities that you added, that were added for each individual field. And for that, you could use you can use the map meta cap filter, and this one passes. Um, this one basically here the most important argument is the second one, the cap. This is the actual meta capability that was checked for, and then if there if there's any particular arguments passed to the check, those are can be retrieved with the args parameter, and then you have to resolve it. So a very simple solution here is check. If is it, uh, basically just do check for the if it's a managed CT option meta capability and simply resolve it to manage CT options, and this will basically say every user can manage CT option by, by just having managed CT options. Um, this is a very simple resolution, but um, and it, and with just that way it wouldn't even be needed. But because of customizability, I show you in a bit how that works. Um, it's very useful to do that and to have that granular management of capabilities. So now you see um, all the settings and that's all fine for now. So what's the benefit of all that? Again, security, usability and customizability. And the key for is customizability to using the most gran granularly possible, uh, most use capabilities, the most granular as, as, as granular as possible. Um, so an example of that Imagine we have our tutorial post type and the tutorial post type uses these capabilities and we handled them in our user with the user has cap filter. Now someone else using your plugin, again in your plugin you should always use a very simple fallback solution, but then someone else could unhook your own user has cap filter. So that would then mean that nobody has these capabilities. But then they could introduce a role that only ha that actually has these capabilities as primitive capabilities that are stored in the database, um, and that, for example, there are plugins that do that, like Yoast SEO adds a SEO manager, or um, WooCommerce adds a shop vendor, or something like that. Um, but generally, this is mostly something that is relevant to either very large plugins or custom setups. Um, Another example is, let's say we want, if you are in a multi-site, we don't want anyone to edit the rewrite slug option from our small plugin, um, except the super admin. So that's the network administrator of the entire multi-site. In that case, we could tweak the meta cap check and we could add, um, and we could basically see if the, is the current, uh, is the current <coughs> capability checked, the manage CT option capability? If so, we also check, is the past argument the CT rewrites lock option because this was the option that, that we want to basically restrict. And in that case, we also add manage network options as a required primitive capability. And this capability is only the, only the network administrator has that capability. So now, 
you can only do this if you have both the manage CT options and the manage network options capability. So at this point, only network administrator has access, and this would look like this. If you access a page now as a regular admin, you see, still see the other two options, but not this one. You would still see, you would only see the rewrite slug if you access that screen as the network administrator. So this may be. Uh, I hope this was not too heavy, but um, I'm happy to answer questions and even afterwards uh, I'm happy to chat about this and uh, please have a look at the plugin and that's it for me for now. Thank you Felix. Uh, well, like you said, are there any questions? Uh, let me just, before uh, I would just put on a further slide. So this has some further resources if you're interested. Um, you can look at those links. I will also post the slides online later. So, But now, um, any questions? Yeah. What is your most favorite plugin? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the question is, what is your most favorite plugin for um, organizing uh, roles and capabilities? So you, you, you gave a good talk on how you can do this while, while creating a plugin, while developing a plugin. But as a, um, a builder of websites, I'm interested in, in learning what could be a good uh, plugin to, to manage roles and to check capabilities. Because that's something where we struggle. It's the second bullet on this slide that, that's, uh, uh, that gives a good comment, I think. Because WordPress isn't very good at handling right. these these things, and this is a total mess for our customers. They are confronted with a lot of um, uh, drag on the screen, a lot of things that they don't want to see. So I'm looking for a good tip on, uh, on a plugin to yeah. organize that. Um, so yeah, the one problem is in fact that WordPress itself, some at some points, doesn't use group capabilities as granular as it should. So there are tons of tickets to work, to be worked on. Um, but of, yeah, it, it's not there yet. So, um, for example, it's very it's very challenging to uh, have someone not not be able to switch the themes, but still be able to customize or something like that. Yeah, that's that's a that's a pain right now. <laughs> I know that. Um, um, regarding plugins, I I have to say since 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 I usually I usually develop or re implement that. Um, Custom in custom ways, but um, I know there are. I know there is one very particular plugin that you could probably find. I, the, so the problem is, what exactly are you? Do you want to accomplish, for example? So you can have. So one thing to that's very useful is to allow multiple roles. Um, to have multi to allow multiple roles, and there is certainly a plugin which I'm, I'm I'm right now don't know the name, but it is. But when you look for a plugin multiple roles, you basically find one that is state of the art, basically. Um, I will I will check with you later. Yeah, 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 sure. Any 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 other questions? Seems like that is. Um, thank you. Yep. Thank you. So applause, please. Applause.